What's good everybody? It's your boy David. Today we are at Hilltop Artist, an educational studio in Tacoma, Washington. We have Basso Glass, owner of Basso Glass, Trenton Kiocho, and his assistant Jacob Wilcox. Today we are going to be creating a fruit bowl out of this twisty cane. Typically we use the sides of the twisty cane, but we've chopped this twisty cane to about a quarter of an inch and we will be using the face of it. By using the face, we will be left with more of a spiral pattern. Now we begin with heating our canes inside of a reheating station. By flipping the plate, we're ensuring that we get more of an even heat. And our reheating station is about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. By squeezing and condensing the pattern, we can eliminate some of the gaps that can cause air bubbles. With the pattern condensed, we start to create a plate. This plate is a plunger and it's the mass of glass that we will use to pick up our condensed pattern. Using some tweezers and some shears, we can complete our plunger and open it to the same size as our pattern. With both masses hot, we can complete our plunger pickup. Using a whisk broom, we can remove any of the kiln wash that may have stuck. Using our steel marble, we can begin to shape our pattern. All the clear glass that we see is just a handle for this pattern, so we will remove it. And it gets worse before it gets better. We're working with a lot of different densities of colored glass here, so it's gonna get a little funky. After a few heats, we are left with a bulbous shape and we can continue to condense our bubble using our wooden block. Using a wet pad of newspaper, we can elongate our pattern. This is going to make it easier for us to separate the pattern that we want and the clear glass. Using a pair of jacks, we can squeeze down a jack line, which is a breakoff point that separates what we want from what we don't want. Yeah, you got time. Using a transfer rod, a punty, we can begin to work on the opposite side. With our transfer complete, we can begin to pinch some of the excess clear glass that's still found in our pattern. Using a pair of NRD shears, we can trim away the excess Up to this point, we've been focused on the pattern, but we can now add it to a blowpipe and create the fruit bowl. Using a wooden block, we can ensure that everything is symmetrical before we gather our next layer. Our hot clear glass is kept inside of a furnace that's about 2100 degrees Fahrenheit and it's the same consistency as warm honey. By dipping the rod and then turning we can collect or gather a layer. The wooden block is our best friend. There's always a wooden block large enough to accommodate its size. And this block will distribute the heat and the glass around a distorted bubble. A good rule of thumb is to always block at least two times before you introduce air. This again evens out the temperatures. And these wooden blocks live in water their whole life, so they are waterlogged. 
They are also made out of a fruit wood, so they contain more moisture and they last longer. Using the steel table, the marver, we can cool down the bottom half of the bubble that will become the base of our fruit bowl. And we take a lot of heat inside of our chamber to maintain the temperature of the glass, but I will cut most of these shots away to give you the best action. This area that we are torching always absorbs the least amount of energy inside the reheating station, so we have to torch it before we can create a jack line, which is a break-off point. And the jack line separates the bowl from the working iron. To inflate our objects, we are using a blow hose that is attached to the blowpipe and the opposite side attached to a mouthpiece. By blowing air, we can expand the bubble, make it larger, but we're also making it thinner. Once we've achieved the desired size, we can use a propane torch to isolate the heat where we want a flat bottom. After a quick heat, we use a wooden paddle made out of fruit wood to flatten the base. At this time, I stabbed up a little bit of white color bar. Meanwhile, the team completed the transfer. So using a punty, we can switch the orientation of our fruit bowl. And with a little bit of water, the pipe releases. The white color bar will be placed on the lip of this bowl, but it's a lot easier to place it when we have a bigger diameter. Once wide and flat enough, we can present the white color. Due to the temperature that we are working with, everything looks bright red and orange and sometimes even black, but its true color will reappear once cooled. Here, we take a little bit too much color on one side, so using our NRD shears, we can remove the excess and flatten out the remaining amount. With the white color band complete, we can open our bowl. Using our wet padded newspaper, we can chill the front half of the bowl to create more of a gentle curve. By continuing to paper the front and the sides, we're really building up heat towards the base of our bowl. After building heat, we are ready for the large heat. This large heat will ensure that everything looks clean and crisp. Now our bowl got a little wide during that heat, so using our newspaper, once again, we had to paper it down. With the fruit bowl complete, it is now time to place it inside of the annealer. The annealer is the oven that will eliminate the stress in the glass. Our fruit bowl stays inside of the annealer overnight, about 12 and a half hours, and that's enough to eliminate all that stress that can cause it to crack. This project took a few hours to complete. I will be adding additional information in the description below, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. It's your boy, David.